If you're creating content to attract ideal clients to your website, you probably have no shortage of ideas of things that you could be writing about. Questions that your clients are asking you, myths about your industry, things that they need to figure out before they can work with you. And starting keyword research can actually make this harder. It can give you even more ideas of things that you could write about or make videos about or record podcasts about. So the tool that I'm going to share with you today is going to tell you exactly how many people are looking for the things that you could potentially be talking about. It will explain how likely you are to actually rank and bring in new leads for those topics. And to an extent, it will tell you whether or not it's worth your time to actually create that content because you're busy. You don't have all the time in the world to be making endless content and hoping that something sticks. And the best part about this tool is it's not just for Google. It will also help you find keywords for Amazon and for YouTube. And it's less than a dollar a month. So stick with me and I'll share my tool right after this. When you're researching and evaluating your content ideas to figure out if the time that you're going to invest in creating them is worth it for search, there are three criteria that I want you to be thinking about. Number one is search volume. Are people actually looking for this? And you can write the best piece of content in the world, but if nobody actually wants to read it, then it probably isn't worth the time that you're gonna spend on it. Number two, you wanna make sure that it's not too competitive. If Especially if you're just starting out, you may not have the authority in your space to rank number one on Google for something right away. And there may be media companies or industry leaders who are just gonna kinda of hold that space. So we wanna make sure that the keyword that you are targeting is something that you can actually rank in the top eh, 20, 30 search results for fairly quickly. Number three, we also wanna make sure that the keyword that you're choosing is relevant to your offer. <laughs> there may be keywords that are high search volume and they're not that competitive, but they have nothing to do with what you're selling. <laughs> you may think, great, I can rank for that. But then once people get to your website, they'll be confused about what you want them to do. So we do need to make sure that the time you're spending as a busy business owner on your content will be worth the people who are bringing to your site. So the tool that I'm going to recommend to you is a tool called Keywords Everywhere. It's a Chrome extension. It's also on Firefox and it is not free, but it is super cheap. It's about $10 for 100,000 searches. So less than a penny per search. Most of my students don't make it through those 100,000 searches in a year. <laughs> so this is like less than a dollar a month that you're spending on this tool. You may be wondering, why should I be paying for this tool, Meg? There are free keyword research tools out there why do I need to pay this dollar a month? Okay, first of all, the quality is going to be better than the free keyword research tools because you're paying for the service, because you're opting in and putting some money behind this, the quality of your data will be better. Number two, it's gonna be more convenient. One of the reasons I love Keywords Everywhere is that it just lays over top of your Google results, your Amazon results, your YouTube results, your Google My Business results, your Answer the Public results. All of these different search engines and keyword research tools will become better because you have keywords everywhere. So it's worth it to invest in that. Number three, you're a business. It's okay to spend money on your business. Remember that if you're not paying for a product, then you are the product. So instead of capping the number of searches that you can do every month or needing to hand over your email address and then getting spam email, just go spend the $10 and get yourself the Keywords Everywhere extension. All right, so how do you get the Keywords Everywhere extension? You go to keywordseverywhere.com and you can go right there and download it as a Chrome extension or as a Firefox extension. So when you first install Keywords Everywhere, some of the information will show up immediately as soon as you turn the plugin on. So you'll start to see some trend information about different keywords. You'll start to see related searches and people also ask questions showing up, but you won't see any metrics right away. Once you go and create an account and give them your $10, which you can pay with PayPal, it's super easy, then you'll start to get the real data and it'll show up right there in your Google searches. So here's what you're going to see when you activate your Keywords Everywhere account. You're gonna see three metrics that are gonna show up right there in your browser. The first column of information you're going to see is average monthly search volume. It's shortened down to VOL. And so they take the amount of people have, who have searched for that in the past 12 months and average it out to a monthly search volume. That means you may have about the same amount of people searching every month or there may be a big spike one month and zero another month. So you 
kind of have to evaluate that on your own. And you can also look at the trends chart that Keywords Everywhere provides for you. But it does give you an approximate estimate of what you could expect in the coming months. The next metric you're going to see is abbreviated CPC. That stands for cost per click. If a, an advertiser were to bid on that for Google ads, that's approximately how much they would pay to get somebody to click on that keyword from them, to click from that keyword over to their website. CPC is a metric that matters a little more if you're gonna be running paid traffic like Google ads than if you're trying to get organic traffic. But knowing that advertisers are willing to pay for an ad means that it might be a keyword that is going to translate into a sale much faster. And the third column of information that you're going to see is comp, which stands for competition. So every Google search engine results page has a certain number of slots that are allocated for ads. And if all of those slots are filled up, then that's a high number. If none of those slots are filled up, that's a low number. So when you're looking at these numbers, what you're going to see is that even if you rank number one for a search term, if the competition number is very high, it's going to decrease your click-through rate because there's just so much other stuff going on on that page. My dog is hanging out in the corner. You okay there, pup? No, I've acknowledged him. So now he's going to stand here and look at me. So let's say that you are a divorce lawyer and you're trying to figure out what different people might be looking for. First thing I would recommend that you do is just come over to Google and Google what you're trying to be found for. So in this case, you can see divorce lawyer, free divorce lawyer. That's probably not a thing. Divorce lawyers, best divorce lawyers, best divorce lawyers in all of these different places, free divorce consultation. People are looking for all these different search terms. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to turn on my keywords everywhere so you can see that it's just a browser plugin right here. I'm going to turn it on and then I'm going to refresh it and you'll see how the page changes. So instead of it just being my Rochester divorce lawyers, you can see right over here, it says, here are related keywords. Here's how often people are looking for them. Well, <laughs> there was a big jump in people looking to divorce in November, 2015. Turns out February, 2016, big changes. Don't know what happened there, <laughs> but here we go. We've got down here, related keywords, divorce lawyer, divorce lawyer, Rochester, best divorce lawyers, free divorce consultations, many of the same things that we were already seeing, but it also adds on this part, which tells us how many people are searching for this. What is the cost? per click. So of these people who are running ads, how much are they paying? Are these worth it for them to actually spend money on these keywords on, on this? And how many of those slots are filled up of all of the different spots that different advertisers can take on a Google search engine results page? How many of them are actually filled up? So you're going to see more on divorce lawyer near me and a lot more on free divorce lawyer, even though people are going to pay less for that because people who are looking for a free divorce lawyer maybe aren't the ideal clients. <laughs> and then you can also see how people are looking for different things and how that changes over time with these trends. You can also see people also search for, that's based on this section of the Google search results page where it says people also ask. And then over here, people are also looking for Craigslist and divorce attorneys. So maybe they're looking for divorce attorney instead of divorce lawyer. It's a different phrase. Divorce lawyer is 70,000 people. Divorce attorney is 30,000 people. So half the search volume of people looking for a divorce attorney. So you may want to put both of those phrases on your your website. So that way you can be found for both of them. Same with separation lawyers, divorce mediation. These are different phrases that people are also looking for that may not have the exact phrase that I typed in, but are related enough that Google knows that they're similar to each other. You can also see the trending keywords. <laughs> These are things that are going up within the past year. So yeah, there's a 50% increase in people looking for divorce attorneys. No surprise there. COVID's really done a, a number on us. And then you can also get down here a section called long tail keywords. Keywords. These are more specific keywords that are answering specific questions. They're going to have lower search volume, but overall they're going to be a bit less competitive than these very kind of general keywords up here. So how much does the divorce lawyer cost? Or can I get a divorce without a lawyer? So if you were a mediator, maybe you want to write a blog post about how to get a divorce without paying for a lawyer, or what are some questions to ask a divorce lawyer or a family divorce lawyer, if you're also wondering about how to do a custody agreement. So these are all different search terms that people are searching for. And you can get this information about how many people are searching for it, how much are the advertisers paying for it, how many of those slots are taken up, and therefore how much 
of a click-through rate you might be able to get if you rank for this term. So all of this information can be incredibly helpful in coming up with your keyword research plan. Hey guys, I'm gonna pop in really quick and interrupt myself to let you know that I've created a companion video to this one that's all about how to use keywords everywhere to find video search terms that you can use in your YouTube videos. So I'm gonna link this up as soon as it's ready. Head on over and check that one out if you're a YouTuber. So that's an overview of keywords everywhere. My favorite cheap and really convenient keyword tool that you can use right in your own search results. If you're looking for more advice and tips and tricks like this, make sure to subscribe and I'll be back next week with another keyword research tool that you are going to love. See you then.